Welcome to the Weka demo series. Today, we're going to be demonstrating Weka data platform performance in Microsoft Azure. Weka makes transparent tiering a reality by using our high performance parallelization and advanced feature set to leverage object storage as a tier, allowing you to take advantage of the economics that object stores can bring to the table. For this demonstration, the environment being used is entirely inside Microsoft Azure. We're going to show you how Weka is configured for tiering and then we'll measure performance in a number of ways, including how Weka can even handle cold reads of tier data from Azure Blob at very high performance. First, let's log in. The Weka deployment consists of just under 30 terabytes of SSD capacity. We can see that the default file system is provisioned with 25 terabytes of SSD capacity, and that tiering is enabled as represented by the blue icon displayed in the tiering column. Using the CLI on a client, we see that our default file system is mounted to slash mant slash Weka. The total size of the file system is 250 terabytes due to tiering, with only 25 terabytes of SSD capacity being provisioned. Let's quickly resize the file system. Let's reduce the total size from 250 terabytes to 200 terabytes, and we'll run the DF command again to see that changes are immediately reflected on our client. Let's edit the file system one last time and increase the total capacity just a little bit to one exabyte while keeping the SSD at 25 terabytes. Once again, the client sees this change immediately. Total file system capacity is thin provisioned, so showing an exabyte of capacity won't bill you for an exabyte until you fill the space. Now let's demonstrate single client performance. We're going to monitor the performance from the Weka web interface. We'll also use FIO to simulate load on the Weka file system in the form of writing a set of 200 500 megabyte files using a one megabyte block size. We can see that our single client is writing to Weka at approximately three and a half to four gigabytes per second. And we can also see from our core usage and utilization that Weka is far from being saturated from a performance perspective. If we switch to a more detailed view, you can see that Weka is using its parallelization to distribute data across all hosts in the system, preventing any hotspots. By the end of the command, we've written just over 100 gigabytes of data to our Weka file system. Now, let's adjust the FIO command. Before, we issued one megabyte writes. This time, we'll do one megabyte reads so we can measure the read bandwidth to Weka from a single client. The web interface will now reflect the new read IO performance. As you can see, a single client is able to achieve over 10 gigabytes per second while reading against the data set while still using minimal resources. While single client performance is nice, we'll now want to use multiple clients to see what performance the cluster can deliver. We'll be able to issue commands on multiple clients from this one CLI window. We can see that we have six clients in total, all identical to the client that we just tested. Let's fire off our FIO command so that all six clients begin writing files to our Weka cluster at the same time. Almost immediately, we can see Weka is delivering up to 24 gigabytes per second of write throughput. Remember, this performance is from a relatively small amount of SSD, roughly 29 terabytes. If we switch windows, you can see the performance per client and that the file system is growing. Switching back, we can again observe core utilization and see that we aren't fully saturated in our Weka system. This deployment is capable of more performance, assuming we have more clients to put load on it. Now let's adjust FIO and see how much read throughput can be achieved with the six clients. We can see the breakout of performance from the top consumers tab in the web interface. It looks like our six clients are pushing approximately 30 gigabytes per second of aggregate bandwidth. Now that we've measured the bandwidth on both single and multiple clients, let's do the same for 4K IOPS. We'll issue another FIO command, and this time we'll be using a single client to write in 4K block sizes instead of the one megabyte block size we used for throughput. And we see the single client is able to push nearly 375,000 IOPS at under 400 microseconds of latency. If we adjust FIO to do 4K reads to the client, we see Weka is delivering over 420,000 IOPS in under 300 microsecond latency to our client. Impressive. 
As we did before when measuring bandwidth, we'll now use six clients to push an aggregate 4K IOP load. We can see from the GUI that Weka is now pushing over 2 million IOPS. From the CLI, you can see that the real number is actually closer to 2.4 million IOPS. Our core utilization is now in the high 90s and we're approaching the performance limit from this small cluster. Now, we could easily add more backend storage services deployment and see linear performance gains. But if this is more than enough performance as is, you could just as easily scale the system exclusively using Azure Hot Blob Storage. Now, let's show you a feature of Weka tiering that allows I.O. to directly use the object store. We'll create a new Weka file system within the cluster and use object direct mounting to access the hot blob capacity. We'll navigate to manage file systems and create a new file system. Since this file system will simply serve as a multi-protocol fast cache in front of Azure Blob, we don't need to provision very much SSD capacity. SSD will only be used to store new writes along with any file system metadata. We will enable tiering and provision it with our Azure Blob bucket. The file system is immediately created and is available to mount. To mount the file system to our clients, we'll need to perform a couple steps. First, let's create the local mount path on all our clients where we'll be mounting this file system. Next, we'll be issuing the mount command with an option that will direct the file system to ignore any time tiering policies and immediately move the data to Azure Hot Blob as soon as it lands on SSD. The metadata, however, will always remain on SSD. However, any future reads of the data from an object direct mount will never be cached on the SSD. Instead, Weka will transparently pass I.O. between the client and the Azure blob. Let's run the mount command across our clients so you can see the difference between the original and the new object direct mounts. Again, Object Direct Mounts provide a very fast write cache while immediately evacuating any written data to the attached Azure Hot Blob bucket that's been linked to the file system. Now, let's measure the write performance to the Object Direct Mount. Same as before, we're going to create I.O. by writing to the Object Direct Mount in one megabyte blocks. We we'll use all six of our clients to show total throughput of this file system. We can see the performance is no different than a non-Object Direct Mount and we're able to achieve over 21 gigabytes per second of write bandwidth. As stated before, Weka is evacuating the data to Azure Hot Blob as represented by the OBS upload column. Weka will continue to do this until only the metadata remains on SSD. With Object Direct, you'll need to measure your write performance and upload write to Blob to size your SSD write buffer in order to accommodate enough space for incoming writes. Now, let's monitor automatic data tiering from SSD to Azure Hot Blob. You'll see from the web interface that our file system contains just over 630 gigabytes of data. We'll speed up the video while it automatically tiers all written data to Azure Hot Blob. All that should remain in SSD when the file system is fully tiered to Azure Hot Blob is the metadata. While results may vary, this deployment is observing roughly 700 to 800 megabytes per second upload speeds into the Azure Hot Blob bucket. As it begins to finish, you'll see that the only remaining consumption on SSD at this time is 2.46 gigabytes of metadata. Now that our data resides on Blob, let's measure how quickly it can be accessed. This is a key measurement for the use case of large amounts of data. Customers want to have confidence that if they have hundreds of petabytes of Weka backed by an object store, they can bring huge amounts of cold data back very quickly. We'll benchmark our performance the same way we did in prior tests with load across all six of our clients. As before, we'll read one megabyte block sizes. We'll configure the command to run for 90 seconds so that we capture the sustained bandwidth from the Azure Hot Blob to Weka. Typically, reads would trigger the data to be cached in SSD, but since this is an object direct mount, reads will always be pulled from Blob. We can see almost immediately that we're reading data from Azure Blob at speeds up to 20 gigabytes per second. And while it does vary a little bit, the performance is rather impressive, especially considering the economic advantage of storing data on Azure Hot Blob. Looking at the details, 
we see the used SSD capacity remains at 2.46 gigabytes, which is the size of our metadata. Also note, the distribution of servicing the tier data is fully balanced across every Weka backend storage node. This balance helps Weka achieve optimal performance from Azure Blob and other object stores. Each Weka backend is responsible for an equal portion of the namespace, and each will perform the appropriate API operations when interacting with tiered data. We can also see that each of the six clients is achieving approximately 2 to 3.5 gigabytes per second reads from Azure Blob. That means that with Weka, you can achieve NFS-like performance from cold reads of your data when stored in Azure Blob. Weka Object Direct for Tiering works with POSIX, NFS mounts, and SMB shares, giving you great economics and performance no matter what applications need data. Object Direct mounts are a great option when looking to preserve SSD capacity for the most demanding workloads. In addition to Object Direct, Weka provides enterprise storage features like quotas, snapshots, multi-protocol access, backup and disaster recovery, and more. For more information, check out www.weka.io and have a great day.